I'm Jared Younger, director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Lab. One of the three questions I receive most often is, I live in blank city, blank state. Can I participate in your study? And I almost always have to say no, because the study involves multiple visits to my laboratory and the grant doesn't have the funding to handle the travel and the hotel rooms and everything that would be involved for those visits. So after answering that question, no, for 20 years, I have finally made a major change in the way I do my clinical trials, and I've shifted from doing local-only clinical trials to doing remote trials, which opens up participation to the entire United States. So I'm very excited to be able to start saying yes when people ask, I live in this certain place. Can I participate in your trial? So I want to show you why these remote trials are really needed, especially with conditions like myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, pain and fatigue type conditions. So I'm going to take MECFS as an example. Here, what you're seeing is the 48 contiguous United States. If you wanted to participate right now, in a MECFS clinical trial, so it's March 18th, 2024, when I did this video, you would have to live in one of these red circles. Obviously, that means that the vast majority of the U.S. citizens cannot participate in any MECFS clinical trial. If you have Gulf War illness, it will, this map would look pretty much the same. If you're looking for fibromyalgia trials, there would be a few more circles. And if you're looking for long COVID trials, there would also be a few more circles in that case. But the general idea is the same. No matter which condition you're currently suffering from, most of the United States is not eligible to participate because they're too far from one of the centers that's running one of these clinical trials. Now, a couple of caveats about this map I'm showing you, these are only showing MECFS trials that are currently recruiting, not ones that have recently completed or not ones that are about to start. So the map will look a little bit different if I was including those. And also, I'm not showing all MECFS studies, like I'm not showing neuroimaging studies or blood tests. I'm only showing clinical trials, and that's a study where a treatment is being tested. What you can see, though, is that the U.S. is very light when it comes to MECFS clinical trials. I just will let you know that Europe has clearly taken the lead in conducting MECFS clinical trials, with Germany being at the forefront of that movement. To see what clinical trials are open right now, I use clinicaltrials.gov, and that's a site I recommend to everyone. No matter what condition you have, you can look up what, tries, what trials are recruiting right now. So I'm running my first remote trial. I'm right in the middle of it. It's looking at 300 individuals with Gulf War illness. It's funded by the Department of Defense. And I am testing curcumin, stinging nettle, and resveratrol to reduce pain and fatigue. These are three botanicals that I found in my previous research to be helpful. And now we're going to do larger groups to see if they are helpful for sure. So it's confirmatory. Now, if I ran this trial as a classic local trial, participation would look something like this. You would have to live in this circle to be able to participate. But since this is a remote trial, the participation area looks like this, plus Alaska and Hawaii and plus the U.S. territories. So if, if someone has access to mail, whether that's USPS or FedEx or UPS, and they have some kind of internet, they can participate, which is a major change from how clinical trials were run classically. There's a lot of advantages to this approach, and there are some disadvantages. Major advantage is the results are more generalizable. So if we run a treatment trial only in a certain region, it, it's possible that the people in that region would respond differently to that treatment than people from other parts of the United States. And so we like our results to be generalizable to everyone uh, that has the condition. One big advantage of the remote trials, it opens up so many more people to participate. And that's helpful 
from my perspective as the scientific director because it makes it easier for me to get the number of people recruited to successfully run the study. The number one reason that clinical trials fail is because the clinical team were not able to recruit the number of people they needed for a successful study. So recruitment is always the major obstacle to successfully completing a clinical trial, and these remote trials remove some of the barriers to that. Last reason, last major advantage is it's just fairer. I just never liked the idea of people never being able to participate in clinical trials because of where they live. So I like that this removes that obstacle. There's some disadvantages. Pretty common sense. A major disadvantage is it's more difficult to monitor your safety when you're not coming in for face-to-face visits. It's possible. It's just more complex. Because of the safety issues and the monitoring issues, there are some treatments where it's just not possible to do remote. If we're testing a pharmaceutical that's never been run in humans before, that's not the kind of treatment we want to do remotely. You would have to be close to uh, the study site to do that kind of study. And also for running complex data collection techniques that require specialized laboratory equipment like brain scans with magnetic resonance imaging or positron emission tomography, of course, we can't do that remotely. So some studies can't be done remotely, but I think in most cases, there's a way to do it remotely. And I think the pros outweigh the cons. As long as the treatment's not highly experimental, I think it can be done. So by default, every clinical trial I from now on will be remote, unless I think that it's too risky or my medical monitor thinks it's too risky, or the institutional review board thinks it's too risky, we'll do it remote. So as I started, as I stated, I've already started doing this, and so far it's going well. I've learned a lot just getting this first remote trial off the ground. Um, I've learned uh, a lot of the caveats and a lot of potential obstacles and have worked through those, and so we get better and better at doing this remote type of trial. We have 100 people consented in our first trial, which is a great start, and a lot of them are taking the treatments right now. I have grants in review right now to run more remote trials, and I am writing more grants right now to run more remote trials. And this will be in long COVID, fibromyalgia, MECFS, and Gulf War illness. All the studies share the same process, no matter what condition you have. Everything is done on the internet or everything is sent to your house if you're in a remote trial. So you can send via live video, you do questionnaires on the internet, you will probably have to do liver or kidney tests, but you can do that at a local uh, clinical lab or kits can be sent to your house where you can do the tests via a little finger prick, give blood, it gets sent off to the lab and they run the tests there. There may be wearables, like you may wear something to collect data on your sleep or your activity, and you do your outcomes on your smartphone or you do them on the internet. So everything's electronic and everything can happen without you having to leave your house. So that's basically what I wanted to say. I just wanted to note that this is a big priority of my lab now, and I think it's a big priority of other laboratories as well. I see more interest in trying to run clinical trials remotely. So soon, these trials will be available to you, no matter where you live in the U.S. I'm also looking into expanding beyond the U.S. I've not started to do that yet. I just have to make sure... um, what legal ramifications there are with shipping treatments overseas. So I can't guarantee that we'll do that anytime in the near future, but it's something that I'm looking at. As I mentioned before, always check clinicaltrials.gov. I think that all above board, honest trials should be registered in advance and clinicaltrials.gov is the place where that's done. So I hope if you've never been able to participate in clinical trials before, either because of where you live or because you're homebound, I hope that's something that will change very soon, and I do expect that to change very soon. So keep an eye on this channel. I will always announce new trials that I run here first, and I thank you for listening.